uh, my pastor and minister to us this morning. Over to you, pastor. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, morning everyone. I want to thank the almighty God for the privilege that we have to gather this morning once again and to seek his face and to worship him. It's, 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 it's glad. I'm, I'm so much excited to meet with you once again uh, this morning. I trust that you had a good night and you've woken up well by the power of God and his grace. And so we really want to thank God so much. And the first one of the first things that we are doing this morning, once again, is to, to worship God and to adore him. So come on, welcome, welcome, everyone. Nice to see you. If you may, please just go to the chat and say good morning. I'm seeing the good mornings already flowing in. Come on, come on, go to the chat and say good morning. Mfundisi, that's a word I get from here. Mfundisi, good morning. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Oganda. Thank you so much, Sister Thuli. Uh, we began this series on Sunday, and the overarching theme is War Room. And that's where we get in to draw some instructions, some commands and strategies for this life, for today, for tomorrow. Uh, like I said before, a, a war room, according to a dictionary, is probably a room, a room in a military headquarters or a room in a building in, in which we say three things, uh, activities are directed and uh, strategic decisions are made. And number three, uh, strategies are planned. Strategies are planned. And so we are meeting here as a war room. I want to call the entire thing a war room uh, to make decisions, to plan and to strategize as God is guiding us. On Sunday, the message was don't waste your punches because we are in a battlefield. We are not in a play field. We are in a battlefield. And on Monday, the message was there is something you've got to kill and you have to starve it, starve the dog uh, to death. On, on Tuesday, we say it's a battlefield and so you've got to fight back. You've got to fight back. We are in a war. You've got to fight back. On Wednesday, that is, uh, yesterday we said, you've got to rewrite your story. You've got to you have a chance to take your spiritual pain and to rewrite your story. Today, the message is simple. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Let's pray, dear loving Father, we thank you so much this morning for the privilege to gather once again and for the privilege of prayer. May you speak to us now, Lord, as we listen, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good, so nice, nice, nice. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's get to work. Let's get to work, let's get to work. Nice to see you once again. Um, on, on June 27th, and the year was 1976, uh, France Airbus left Tel Aviv, Israel for Paris. And it had a stopover at Athens International Airport, that's Greece, where it picked more passengers. And unbeknown, unknown to anyone, amongst those who were picked were four hijackers, four hijackers boarded the plane, 1976. Of the four, the two were Palestinians and, and, and two were Germans. The plane took off and everything looked fine. Everything was serene during the early moments of the flight until in the mid air, the screams and, and the commands and the shouts of a man and a woman disrupted the peaceful flight with grenades and pistols trained on the flight crew. They took control of the plane and directed it to Entebbe Airport, that is in Uganda. What was the motive? The motive was to compel the Israeli government to release 40 Palestinians in its jails 
and, and 13 who are held in other countries. Okay, so on board the plane on that you know, fateful day were 246 passengers with 12 crew team. It's a big number. When they go to Entebbe, that is in Uganda, the Ejekas released all the non-Jewish hostages, but kept 105 Israeli passengers whom they were going to use as a bait. They were going to make commands that, hey, you release the people in the prisons or we kill these people like cows. The terrorists had sworn to finish and to kill all of them, of the remaining hostages, if the conditions were not met on a given date that they had set. The hijackers did not know that behind the curtains, the Israeli government was planning a rescue team. It, it, it got no idea that as the negotiations were on, there was a team. So the negotiation was just you no know, uh, to cover, but there was a team that was seriously planning for the rescue of the 100 and five, and they were armed with the knowledge of the design, design of the Entebbe airport, and, 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 and the knowledge that they got from you know, the, 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 the hostages who were non-Jewish who had been released. So the, the commandos were up to the task, and they, they flew through Nairobi and uh, north, through, um, I mean, over, over Lake Victoria, and, and they went low so that they could not be detected. And, and, and the operation began. And for the next 90 minutes, they did this with military precision. And after 90 minutes, one or two of the one or five hostages were set free and all the kidnappers and uh, 45 Ugandan soldiers were fell down, they were killed. It was a very successful raid. And it, 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 it came to be known as Operation Thunderbolt. Or if you read in history, you read in books, it's called the Entebbe Ray. I want to take your attention this morning to the book of Acts chapter 12. Which book did I say? Acts 12. In Acts chapter 12, we, we find another story of a rescue mission. We find a story of a rescue mission. In, in scene one of that story, King Herod has arrested James. And not just arrested him, but killed him. James was the brother of John killed him, beheaded him, decapitated him with a sword. And that always breaks my heart when I read that, that, okay, sometimes we, 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 we could be on the Lord's side, but trouble will still come. Okay, it, it really breaks my heart that this disciple, that this follower of Jesus Christ had his head decapitated and uh, beheaded. In, in sin number two, uh, we, we find Peter is arrested. And that, that, that should scare anyone. That your associate, your colleague, has been beheaded and you have been arrested. And he is thrown into prison. And if you read in verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5, they're just waiting. They're just waiting. Because it was, it, was, it, was, it was a Passover weekend. And so they were waiting so that uh, after the Passover, then Herod would bring him out to the people and they would make a judgment. But just when things look uh, so much impossible, uh, the, the story changes because an angel comes to Peter and Peter escapes. You see, when things look so bleak and, and so black and so blank, God made a way. And I still believe in a God who makes ways. God will make a way. I, I don't know what has cornered you this morning as you listen to this message. I don't know in which tight corner situation that you find yourself in. I don't know in which bumpy roads. I don't know in which portals. I don't know in which adults. I don't know in which stumbling blocks that you are traveling through the rugged path of this life. I just don't know. I got no idea how the 354 who are tuned in now I don't know what you are going through as an individual. Some of the things we go through, but we cannot even dare to bring them in a prayer meeting because they are, they are so personal and they are so sensitive that you cannot even raise them 
as a prayer request. Yes, yet, 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 God, yet God knows. Come on, God knows what, what you're going through. And I'm here to announce this morning that God is faithful and he will provide a way of escape for you. I don't know, it could be financial, it could be some destructive habits, it could be issues that you've gotten yourself into, and you got no way to get out of those issues. Don't worry, my friend, help is on the way. First Corinthians chapter 10, 13, God will provide a way. Help is on the way, my friend. Help is on the way. Come on, if you may, you can write on the chat section, my help is on the way. My help is on the way. God has got a solution for me. Yes, I, I got a problem, but, but God has a solution. I want to quickly look at some few things that we can pick from this passage. Some few observations from the passage. That is Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 19. Number one, God's people pray. God's people pray. That's number one. God's people pray. You see, the, the story looks bad. The, the story looks disappointing. The story looks not, not promising until something happens. You go to read in verse 5, Acts chapter 12 and verse 5. And, and that changes the storyline. Come on, come on, come on. That changes the storyline. The Bible says, Peter was therefore kept in prison. That's so sad. But, the story says, but, there's a but there. And so the but negates everything. It says, but honest prayer, that is sincere prayer, urgent prayer was offered to God for him by the church. People like you are praying. Okay, people like you are praying. In the face of overwhelming problems, the church prayed at night. Okay, in, in, in the face of my overwhelming issues, there were people who were praying in the morning at 5 a.m., pleading with God, praying for my soul, praying for my issues, People prayed when Peter was in prison. And, and that changes everything, my friend. you got a problem, God has a solution. you got an issue to deal with that, that is beyond your abilities and capacity. God has a solution, my friend. And, and, and he, he will step in because help is on the way. Intercession is very, very important. People have prayed for me. And I have prayed for and with thousands of people and i have seen god just coming in through i have seen god walking in and changing the equation i am glad that you get to pray daily interceding every day at 5 a.m interceding on behalf of someone in interceding on behalf of your family interceding on behalf of your friends interceding on behalf of the church interceding on behalf of the governments. I am glad that God has a people who are faithful, who wake up, they throw away the blanket and, and all the convenience that they would have enjoyed early morning and they just spend time with God. May God bless you, my friends, for this ministry. May God continue firing you up. May God continue you know, fueling you that you may continue interceding and praying for people. When the situation was so black and blink, and, and, and blink, there were people who were praying for Peter. I thank you for standing in the gap for those who need God's mercy, for those who are in addiction, for those who are in bondage, for those who have lost up, you stand in and you pray for them. And every time you pray, you got no idea how many people are delivered from their issues. You just got no idea. The prayers that you raise, that you lift up to God, like a sweet incense, you've got no idea how many people are being delivered, how many people are being saved, how many situations that were so hopeless are being turned around. Keep on praying, my friend. Keep on praying for someone. I, I like the words of the song. The songwriter says, I need the prayers of those I love. As I travel through the rugged path of life, that I may true and faithful and live for Jesus every day. One of the stanza says, I, 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 want the, I want the friends, I, I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul above and intercede before God for me, for me. I need the prayers of those I love. I, I want to believe that these people were praying for Peter. 
were not just praying only for that moment because there was a problem. No, 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 no. I believe these were people who were daily meeting, daily talking to God. They were praying, like Paul says, without ceasing. It was not a form of an emergency religion. You see, there are people who are never serious with God until they have a problem. Emergency religion. They're never serious with God until they have a sickness and the doctor says this one is a bit uh, serious and dangerous. And so suddenly they become religious. They pray and pray and pray because there's a problem. Or they are looking for that job and the interviews on Monday and they call everyone, please pray for me, please pray for me. Yet before then, they, they had nothing to do with God. That, that is an emergency religion. There's a problem that you cannot deal with. And so you run to God because of the problem. That's an emergency religion. No, no, I, I believe this one, people who are always in the presence of God, like 5 a.m. prayer ministry, always talking to God, always interceding, always pleading, always lingering, and always agonizing in the presence of God. So number one, God's people pray. Number two, God hears our prayers. You read that from verse five all the way to verse number 17. God is still in the business of answering the prayers of his children. When you cry to God, in your room, in your closet, God will hear your prayer. When you whisper a prayer, God hears that prayer. God answers prayers. I, I am sure that God answers prayers. Listen to Peter later. Peter later says in the book of First Peter, in the book of First Peter, he says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are, are attentive to their prayers. Come on, that's so powerful. He says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are very attentive to their prayer. That is what Peter learned. And that is a testimony that he had. You must be familiar with this illustration for three successive years. How many years? Three years. The rain had failed in the village. The crops had disappeared and, and they were dry. The land was dry and, and brown. The trees had lost their leaves. The stream that scattered through the village was dry. There was famine in the land. All villagers, how many villagers? All villagers decided to pray for rain. On the day of prayer, all the people gathered, but only one boy came with an umbrella. And the story says, that is faith. Praying with confidence that the God you are talking to is going to answer your prayer. The book of Mark chapter number 11 and verse 24. Book of Mark 11 and 24. The Bible says, therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Come on. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Come on. We, we, we have no business praying if we don't believe. Mm, mm, mm. Get back to your bed. We have no business praying if we don't believe that we are going to receive it. The Bible says believe that you will receive it. And it shall be yours. And so you are sick this morning and you're coming in faith to God saying, God, I know you are going to deal with my issue. You're looking for a job and you're saying, God, I know you are going to provide. You have provided for me. You're looking for a spouse and you're already thanking God because God is going to do it. You are too broke, too broke, too broke that you cannot even afford to pay attention. Too broke that you can't afford to pay attention. But you believe that God is going to, God is sorting you out. You start thanking God for receiving it because the Bible says in Hebrews 11, faith is the evidence of things not seen, a substance of things hoped for. You, you've not seen it, but you already believe that you have it. First John chapter 5 and verse 14, the Bible says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything, According to his will, he hears and he answers. Number three, number three. God gives peace. God gives peace. One of my favorite verses, I think I said this before, is Isaiah 26 and verse number three. The Bible says, you keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. He is the prince of peace. You can't imagine this. You can't imagine that Peter was waiting to be killed, to be executed. And in verse number six, the Bible says he was busy sleeping. You are being killed the next day, maybe. 
but you are busy sleeping. What peace is that? It's the peace that comes from God, that you are going through issues, you are going through difficulties, but you are just at peace. And Paul says in Philippians 4 verse 7, it's the peace of God which passes all understanding that guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm not sure whether if, if, if I would have been able to do what Peter is doing. James is dead, the associate is dead, the friend is dead, and you are waiting to be executed and you go to sleep, you go to snore. Come on, I cannot believe that. The book of Psalms chapter 4 verse 8 says, in peace, I will both lie and sleep. I will lie down and sleep for you alone. The Lord make me dwell in safety. In peace, I will die. I will lie and sleep. May God give you the peace that passes all understanding. When your heart is faint, may God lead you to the rock that is higher than you. Peter's peace also came from the prayers of God's people. Okay. The people of God were praying. Listen, listen to me. Don't struggle alone with the issues of life. Be because pe there are people who are willing to intercede and, and to help, help you bear the issues of this life. If, if you struggle to sleep because of the stress from the storms of life, ask someone to pray for you and claim God's promises. His peace came from the people who are praying for him. His peace also came from knowing that God was in control. God was in control. Let, 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 let me finish with this illustration. A plane full of passengers was flying on a usual journey. There were, there were turbulence high up there and everyone was frightened. This is a familiar story. But there's a boy who did not look disturbed. He, he was not perturbed by the storm. And, and upon disembarking, they asked him why, why he, he, he looked at peace. And the little boy responded, my dad is a pilot, an experienced one. And I definitely know I will be safe every time that he flies. God is in control, my friend. As you go through the issues of this life, God has promised that he will send his presence with you and an angel will come. Help is on the way, my friend. Just for the, like for the three Hebrew boys, they were thrown into the fiery furnace, but help was on the way. Daniel was thrown into the den, den of lions, but, but help was on the way. God is our refuge and our very present help in trouble. I don't know what you're dealing with this morning, but I came to tell you you are not alone because God has dispatched some solution for you. When you are in a fix, remember you are not alone, my friend. When, when you are in an exam room and it looks so difficult, you are not alone, help is on the way, call on Jesus. When you are in a jam, when you are in a trying moment, when you are afraid, when your heart is broken, when you have lost all hope, my friend, remember you are not alone. Help is on the way. God wants to step in and to display power in your life. God wants to step in and to open the doors, the prison doors of your life. My prayer this morning, may God open the doors for you in this life. May God swing them wide open today, my friend. The doors that got closed, the stubborn doors you've been knocking, may God step in. And said his angels, oh, he comes in person to open the doors for you. I want to pray for you. You're saying, God, I know my help is on the way. God help me. God open the prison doors. God, I'm going through a trying and a difficult moment. God just intercede for me. I need you, Jesus. Dear loving Father, we thank you so much this morning. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to meet. We know, God, that you are on our side. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. There could be someone going through trouble, but God, your word this morning is telling us that help is on the way. God, you came to rescue humanity. You saved us from sin. But that was not all. You are so much interested in our individual affairs, in our individual struggle, in our individual issues. God, we invite you into our lives and into, the, into our families, into our businesses, into our jobs, and the things that we deal with every day. Give us success, God, today and always, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.